Trevor with Maker Experiment, and today we're somewhere a little bit different. We're up in Golden, Colorado, checking out Epilogue Laser Headquarters. So we're gonna go in there, talk with them, see some of what they have going on, and check it out. Let's go. That is cool. Giant Aztec calendar right in the building. Bunch of samples, one of the older lasers. That is awesome. Couple of projects. Over 30 years. Very cool. Okay, this one caught my eye. This one is a canvas that's wrapped around engraved with different shades. That is really cool looking. I should say that this is the marketing and sales building. So this one has a lot of their facilities here, offices mostly, conference room, and some laser machines. So I'm gonna walk you around. I'll show you a little bit of that. They also have a G100 here that I'll get a few snippets of. They're packaging it up and sending it to a trade show. So I won't get to do a bunch with that, but I will show it to you and see what you think of that. But right inside of here, we also have an Eiffel Tower. So let me show you around. Okay, so there's offices down that hallway. And then if you get on here, there's machines there. There's a conference room over here. And then my favorite part so far has been this room. So we have a Fusion Pro, we have another Fusion Pro, Fusion Edge, Fusion Edge. And then you have a Fusion Maker, the big Fusion Pro. And then my second favorite room is this one. So you got the Fusion Pro there. That was like an early version. You have the Fiber Mark, the Helix, another Helix and then another Fusion Pro. And even cooler, this one is a prototype. So this one's the Edge prototype. Super cool, I love that. This is like museum piece worthy to me. So I like that too. Walk down a little bit, you got a kitchen drink area. And then back here, is more of the trade show kind of supplies, pamphlets, all that kind of stuff. And then all the crating, chipping, and everything else that goes out for the trade shows as well. It's not terribly ergonomic. So focus is done by raising the Galvo platform until the crosshatch is generated by the Galvo assembly, and then the red dot is coming from the source over here. You can see that. Uh, and this is the F-Beta 163 lens, Trevor, and the 254 is over there. This is cool. There's a little sensor here that will detect when the 163 or the 254 lens is installed. It will automatically feed back to our software suite. The graphic that I'm gonna do right here. So you can move this around, drop it wherever you want. This is our four inch field. So two inch, two inch, two inch, two inch. Um, our flatbed machines, we go off of zero, zero up here, but this we're going zero about the center of the field, which is typical for a Galvo based machine. So here we can do this with the import. Uh, and so we're using, this is a 60 watt MOPA laser with the F-Data 163 optic. So we can import this, and I'm gonna do um, a deep engrave on this. So we import, gives us all of our laser parameters already pre-programmed in here. So we're doing four hatching patterns, and then we're doing four cycles. So what we're doing here, Trevor, is we're doing the same speed, power, frequency, and waveform, which is the pulse duration. Frequency is how often the laser pulses, but then the waveform is the pulse duration, how long the pulse is left on. So for deep engraving, we like to set that pulse duration as high as possible at maximum. 
so, and then we can add another hatch pattern in here. I'm going to add one to do an outline pass. So after each pass, it's going to go around the TW and to kind of clean up the edge a little bit. So it works pretty good. So I just select here an outline, and then um, I'll be the same as parameters. I'll probably go over the speed and power. I'm just looking at the outline. Um, and then here on the hatch patterns, I like to do different angles. So we're going to cross that. So we have 0, 90, and then 45, and then 315. It produces better engraving, more consistent engraving, especially in the bottom of the recess. Uh, and then here we can give it a name. I like to, to do this because if we're sending a bunch of jobs over, I like to have them individually named. Even though we've got the little thumbnail preview over there, uh, I still like to give it a name when I'm printing it over. So. And then I just select on it. Um, I can close the door. Button. That's just a simple toggle up and down. Or, if you're starting the job, you'll automatically come down and the job will start. I'm back from my trip to Epilogue's headquarters and it's actually been a few weeks. Uh, I got really busy with some other things and didn't really get a chance to recap my visit. Uh, so what ended up happening was I helped them with a video while I was there. And in that process, my son ended up getting sick and I ended up having to change my flight and come home early and then things just kind of got out of hand to the point where I didn't have time to wrap anything up and now we're three weeks later. But I wanted to touch on a few things that I thought were really awesome from my experience there and what I learned about Epilogue and the headquarters and the people that work there. So first off, I did meet with the president, uh, Steve, and I also met with one of the other owners, Mike. Both of them are really cool guys. The best part that I 
the key takeaway for me coming from that visit was they're all about the customer and making sure that they're putting out a quality and safe product. It was actually very refreshing to see how much they actually invest into the quality and the safety aspects of laser machinery. It was good to know that they are concerned about it. And I will admit like, while they move a little bit slower sometimes when it comes to content creation or, you know, the speed to market of some things, they're putting a lot of thought behind it to make sure that everything goes right when they put out the product. So it definitely makes sense that they're, they're building a core foundation to have a very long running business and it shows in what they do. So some of the things I got to see where I got to see the marketing and sales department, they have a bunch of machines in that office uh, that you'll see throughout the video. And it was cool to see that they have a spot to go try settings or try things or bring customers in if customers want to go and see the machines in person. The best part I think of the trip was seeing the actual manufacturing of the machinery. I've never seen that before. I actually got to see what the inside of a laser tube looks like, which I've wanted to see for years. So that was really cool for me. It was neat to see what all goes into it. It's not at all what I initially thought it was. There's a lot more to it. And now after seeing it in person, it totally explains why a replacement tube costs what it costs. Uh, so it was very enlightening from that standpoint. I got to meet with the head of their software department, the head of the laser department, uh, the head of the tech department, uh, and pretty much every department lead they had. And that was really cool for me because I could ask direct questions on my concerns as well as some of the questions I've heard from my audience. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those from the information I got. And if I don't have the answer, I will see if I can get somebody to give me that information. So when it comes to their manufacturing facility, I, it wasn't at all what I thought. They had different staging areas that were very reminiscent of like a large corporation, even though they're pretty small. So it was refreshing to see how they thought through their process of how things would get built and how they'd get staged and everything else. And to me, that was really interesting to see. So it, they showed areas of where they build the chassis, where they integrate the components, where they do the laser build of the actual laser tube. Uh, how they integrate that all together, where they install the cameras, where they do all the testing and calibration. And it was impressive to say the least. The types of machinery they have, the links they go to in engineering. It was really good to see how much they're really investing into the products that they put out. I just wanted to get on here and share my thoughts overall of what that visit was like. Uh, if you have any questions, again, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Be sure to check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.